Hello and welcome. This is a video guide on how to optimize Apex Legends. I want to point out the guide will definitely be helpful for high-end systems, but it will boost mid-range and low-end gaming PC systems with much more effectiveness. The guide will not only show you how to boost the FPS, but it will also improve game quality and system performance. In turn, this will and should help fix any lag or frame rate drops that you could be experiencing while playing Apex Legends. Apex is actually really well optimized but nonetheless we're going to go through a few simple steps that show the best settings to apply in Windows as well as in game and a few recommendations along the way on using overlays. So without further ado let's get started. First, we'll go over the best Windows 10 PC settings step by step. Step number one, clean out your shader cache. I cannot stress enough how important this is. It should always be the very first thing that you do. There's a link in the description for a video that shows you exactly how you do that if you don't know how to do that. Step two, to ensure you get the most out of your PC whilst you game, I highly advise that you switch off every overlay and background application while you play. Things like Steam, and Nvidia GeForce, Xbox Game Bar, Discord, even River Tuna, and any others that could affect the performance while you game. This is mostly for players with low-end gaming systems that need all the power they can get, basically. To turn the Steam overlay off, just head into the Steam setting menu, click in-game, and untick the box that says enable the Steam overlay while in-game. To turn off the Nvidia GeForce overlay, open up Nvidia GeForce Experience, click on the settings icon Icon, go to general and switch off the in-game overlay for Xbox Game Bar. Using the window search bar, type game mode settings and then click the icon. Once the window is open, navigate to the left side and click Xbox Game Bar. And of course, set it off. Then you navigate back to the left and click on captures, where you then need to switch off background recording and recorded audio. For Discord, all you need to do is open settings and on the left, select overlay. You'll then just need to disable the option that says enable in-game overlay. After you've done that, navigate to advanced and make sure hardware acceleration is set to off as this actually uses GPU power to run Discord. Step three. In the window search bar, type in game mode and click the settings icon. Once the window pops up, ensure game mode is set to off. I know this sounds counterintuitive, but game mode is actually known for being more problematic than helpful. Currently, Microsoft are still working on a fix. I will put a link in the description below that goes into detail about the game mode option in case you're wondering how it all works. But for now, just switch it off. Step number four, navigate back to Windows search bar, type in graphics settings and click the icon. Now in here, you should see an option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This needs to be set to on. And if it wasn't, you will need to restart your PC after you turn it on. Once you've done that, navigate down to graphics performance preference. And what you'll want to do is add Apex Legends to your games list. To do this, you need to find your games directory and add the games launch application. You basically need to find where it is installed, whether that's Steam or Origin. In this guide, I'm using Steam as it's easier. So to find it on Steam, minimize the window, open up Steam, go to your library, right click on Apex Legends, click on properties, then click local files and then browse. What you want to do is copy the directory link, which is where your game is installed. You can then just close Steam, navigate back to your graphics settings window, click browse, and you'll want to paste the link to the address bar at the top. Then find the application icon for Apex Legends and you simply choose it, select it and add it to your graphics list. Finally, you click on options and then set it to high performance and click save. Step five, go back to the Windows search bar once again, type in power plan and click edit power plan. At the very top, click power options and under preferred plans, ensure high performance is selected. Now we're gonna dive into the game and change a couple of things. So for display, mode, you should always have it set to full screen for best performance. However, with Apex Legends, borderless window also works really well. The aspect ratio should be set to your native aspect ratio, which will be 16 by 9 for the majority of us. Resolution should also be your native resolution. My monitor is 1080p, so I'm set to 1080p. When it comes to field 
the view, the higher the number, the more you'll be able to see on screen. But in turn, the higher the number, the more GPU power you'll require. I would say for lower end GPUs, I'd recommend not going above 80. For mid range, I'd say anywhere between 80 and maybe even 100. And of course, for the higher end systems, just go ahead and set it to the highest number. Now diving into the advanced settings, starting with VSync, you should set it to off if you have a G-Sync or a FreeSync monitor. If you don't have that function with your monitor, then having VSync on or off is really down to you. If you have it on, it will stop your screen from tearing, but you will have input latency, which is very low, but could give you a disadvantage against your competition in games just like Apex Legends. Setting it to off will remove that input latency, but you might see some tearing. If you do set it off, then it is recommended to cap your frame rate to no more than 60 frames per second. That will basically minimize tearing. If you can see an Nvidia Reflex option, I'd recommend enabling it with boost as it will dramatically reduce latency. For adaptive resolution FPS target, I would recommend leaving it at zero, especially when it needs anti-aliasing to be Set to TSAA, which, if you have it off, will give you about 3% boost in FPS. So I would recommend anti-aliasing to be set to off for both the low end and the mid range systems. Now for texture streaming budget, I think this will be quite self-explanatory. I have a six gigabyte VRAM GPU. I do set mine to high, which is for the four gigabyte GPUs. Basically going from the highest setting, which is insane, down to none will give you around a 6% improvement in performance. I I would just recommend setting yours within whatever your VRAM budget is. Texture filtering, I would recommend anisotropic four times, as it seems to be a nice happy medium for most low end and mid range GPUs. The difference between anisotropic 16 times down to bilinear is about 6% in performance. Ambient occlusion affects performance the most, as the difference between high and disabled is about 15%, which is huge. I would recommend disabling it completely as this option is mostly just shadow quality. For sun shadow coverage I would set it to low as it will boost performance by around 5%. Sun shadow detail you can leave as high it really doesn't make much difference when it comes to performance. Spot shadow detail also doesn't affect performance that much so I would say low or high for most of us. Volumetric lighting dictates whether or not you see sunbeams in game. If you set it to off it'll give you a 6% performance boost. For dynamic spot shadow, just go ahead and leave it enabled as disabling it does not affect anything to do with performance. Model detail, I would say medium for around a 4% performance boost when you compare it to high. Setting it to low will give you around 6% boost. For effects detail, medium or high doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. I'd still recommend for you to go medium as it lowers the CPU and GPU load. Impact marks you can leave as high, it doesn't affect performance performance, the ragdolls option affects CPU more than GPU. I would recommend set it to medium. Now, of course, all of these settings really depend on your PC. So definitely play around and see what works best for you and your system. As I said before, Apex Legends is really well optimized and you will see very few issues with it. I do honestly hope this guide helps you in some way or another. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.